Okay, so this inner product is easy to calculate. Okay. Incidentally, and glancing through your book, and they do use the notation that I wanted to use, even though it's redundant with some vector notations, because sometimes you use this for vectors. Okay. It's this. So, I'll just write PQ is what? Integral from 0 to 1 of x squared minus 2 times x minus 4 dx. And incidentally, they use the integral from negative 1 to 1. And that actually makes sense. They don't state why. But it makes sense because if you have an anti-symmetric function, it's integral would be 0, right? Okay. Uh, but if you, well, if you square it, it's always positive. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, that comes later. So you're going to get what? You're going to get x cubed minus, yeah, I don't know if the cube would be good, minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 8 dx, right? Right. Well, that equals, without writing out all the details, because you, hopefully you all know how to do those details, since I'm sure you're being tested on it shortly. Uh, that's going to give you x to the fourth over 4. At 0, you're going to get 0. At 1, x is going to be 1. You're going to have 1 fourth. That's minus 4 times 1 third, because the integral of x squared from 0 to 1 is 1 third. Minus 2 times one, uh, 1 half. Plus 8. Okay? That equals, well, that's 1, that's 4 thirds, and that's 1 half, which means that's 16 twelfths, negative 16 twelfths, and that's 3 twelfths, which is negative 13 twelfths. Is that 1 fourth minus 4 times 1 third? Yeah. Okay. So negative 13 twelfths added to 6 is 49 twelfths, I think. You can check out my arithmetic, okay? Added to 7, right? Huh? Added to 7, right? What about 7? Uh, not added to 6, but added to 7. Yeah, actually, I think it's 59 twelfths. No. Negative 13 twelfths added to 6. Oh, that, yeah, that would be 7. Okay, and 7 would be 84 twelfths. And then 13 from 84 gives you 71. So, yeah, I said check out my arithmetic. Is that what you got? Um, 6 and 11 twelfths. So. Why would you do that? I, that's how I... That's all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You need to approximate it, right? It's approximately... Uh, what you said, 6 and 11 twelfths? That's what I said. Or 5 and 11 twelfths? It would be 5 and 11 twelfths. Is that what you said? I said 6, but it's 5 yeah, and 11 Yeah, I think it would be 5. Because 13 and twelfths is 1 twelfths, so 7 and So that's 5.5 yeah. five twelfth is point seven. Oh, 06. Three repeating. So that would be nine three. No, nine three six six repeating, maybe. Okay, anyhow, you could approximate it, right? You got a number. Okay? Just an illustration. Okay? Now let's go ahead and figure out the angle between these vectors. Okay. From the x 
expression that will adapt from the dot product. Okay, instead of dot product, we're using this. But it would be from this, right? So the cosine of theta is the inner product. This, right? So the theta is the inverse cosine of this. over this, which equals then what? We've got this, 71 twelfths, right? Mm -hmm. We've got to get magnitude of P and magnitude of Q. Well, define magnitude here is the dot product of P with itself. So just I didn't write it that way because I didn't have notation for the dot product. Okay. So you're just for the magnitude of P, you're just going to square x squared minus 2? Yeah. Okay. But let's write it out in notation because, as I keep saying, if you don't get the notation really precise, you're less likely to think it through right. So don't just cut the hell, okay, here's how you do it. Because if you don't see the symbolic relationships, you're going to be less likely to be able to adapt them to an unfamiliar situation. Okay, so. Um, Check my time here. I've got plenty of time. Um, so, so that's what we mean by the magnitude, right? Now that's the way I defined it here, but it's really defined as the inner product of the vector with itself, and that's. Universal. That's why I want you to write down all the steps, write down all the relationships. That's the integral from 0 to 1 of p squared. p is x squared minus 2. And that's easy. It's the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the fourth minus 4x four squared plus 4. Okay. Um, and that's going to be one fifth minus four times one third plus four, right? Then we get these funky fractions because that's what happens when you integrate powers. Okay? Can't avoid it. But we have a common denominator of. 15, right? Uh, okay. So that's uh, 3 fifteenths. Yeah. Okay. And that's 4 thirds, which is negative 20 fifteenths. So it's negative 17 fifteenths plus 4, which is 60 fifteenths, which gives us 43 fifteenths. And if it doesn't, fix it for me. Okay. But that's what we're going to write down. 43 fifteenths multiplied by magnitude of Q is the inner product of Q with itself, and you have to understand that. Integral from 0 to 1 of Q squared of X dx, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of X squared minus 8X plus 16 dx, which equals what? Well, that's going to be one-third, right? But then it's going to be minus 4 plus 16, which makes it 12 and a third, okay? Which makes it 37 over 3. Because, of course, mixed numbers aren't really good to do calculations with, right? Now, 
okay, we do the reciprocal, we get a bunch of numbers, and take the inverse cosine of it, right? So I'm not going to do that calculation, but I'll kind of approximate it. That's pretty close to 6, this is pretty close to 3, and this is pretty close to 12. 6 over 12 would be 1 half, and then another 3 would give you 1 sixth. Okay? So, and I got busy writing down the numbers. I didn't write out the inverse cosine. Okay? So I could squeeze that in and make it really messy. Um, so while I'm telling you to be really precise with what you do, I'm showing you why, what happens if you don't. That's not my intention, of course. Okay, so now it says inverse cosine of, not that anybody can read it, right? Okay, so theta is approximately the inverse cosine of one-sixth. Now, how do you estimate the inverse cosine of one-sixth? You don't immediately go to your calculator, although if you want an accurate answer, you do. You first see what the inverse cosine of one-sixth is. And that means you draw a unit circle. And you locate one sixth here, okay? And the inverse cosine is between zero and pi. So the inverse cosine of one sixth is what? If you're in degrees, it looks like it's about 80 degrees or so. If you're in radians, it looks like it's about 1.4, 1.5 radians. Okay? So approximately equals maybe 80 degrees or 1.45 radians. Just from a unit circle picture, and you always want to do this in your head, if possible. Keep drawing it until you can do it in your head. So you know that your calculator is giving you what you need it to give because if you don't have this picture and don't understand the unit circle, it's going to bite you again, again, and again for the rest of your life if you're an engineer. Okay? That depends on what engineering, but yeah, it's going to tend to in most fields.